Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the rundown. I am your host, Evan from My Media TV, joined by the illustrious No Not to Brian. Hey guys. Brian Ortega. And this is Welcome to the Rundown. So, Brian, I have a video I want to share with you just to sort of uh uh get things started now, shall we? Of course, yeah. That's what this is what it looks like when you use a ceiling fan as a basketball. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know why I was expecting something more. No, th this, this, this is Bobby Orlando. He, this is his entire fucking shtick. He has done 140 of these. And I caught him at 90 two days ago. You know who this reminds me of? This guy oh. reminds me of the of the guy who jumps into the random shit. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, not necessarily. There was this guy I saw who says, uh, seeing how many uh of blank can hold up my body weight, and he's just him falling down. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Noelia has shown me him. But really, you haven't heard of the guy who goes like, Juggalos and Juggalettes, what's up? I'm so-and-so, and I'm going to jump on 10 pieces of fiberglass. All and of this is what it looks like. I know, it's all basketball. I'm just saying, like, the setting and everything. As a basketball. That's a, that, that was uh, episode 100. And, to his credit, he could actually, he could actually throw. But, you know, you know what all of this kind of just reminds me of? What? New Jerseyite behavior. True. True. It is all just pure New Jerseyite behavior. But uh into I think this was kind of like the only thing that like was on my radar this week that I kind of wanted to chit chat about. Uh okay. this ha this happened in like the last 24 -ish hours. Very quickly, I'm just sending you before we talk about the thing you want to talk about, go to uh -huh. TikTok very quickly and go pull up the video I just sent you. Okay. Just so you know the you... reference of uh the guy i'm talking about fair enough it's just the background like the way he shoots his video it reminds me of this man jumps on printer man jumps on printer <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna play that again so everybody can see exactly what the fuck just happened. And Brian is just pissing uh. himself in joy. He chose to do that. That's why I laugh. It's not like somebody else recorded it. He recorded it himself. <laughs> the thing I wanted to talk about was Eminem dropped a fucking Slim Shady song after 20 Dude, fucking years. Yeah, and people were going crazy that he had the audacity to say that line about Babe the Stallion, even though it wasn't even a diss. No, it wasn't. A, like, so I went to on the fucking genius and looked at the lyrics and shit and i'm like the only thing in that entire song at least from my like from the scan i did of it that i per that i thought like was like a little like that's like you know like fuck fucking hell bro was like using cross dresser as like a derogatory thing like that was the only thing everything like like he mentioned you know he he mentioned make the stallion it wasn't a diss he mentioned he mentioned like uh you gotta also remember, though, very quickly, the fact that you can only say that he used crossdresser as like a derogatory term when as in the a when twenty years old ago, white dude Eminem, yeah, yeah, as Eminem, when twenty years ago, Eminem. he was dropping f bombs and not not f u c k like nope. nobody's business. No, a hundred percent. And like, listen, like, still fuck him because he's a Zionist, but like, even so, like, at the end of the day. Does he say what is 
I think I I like Met Meta said he was. I take her at face value. I don't know if it's like he's like ride or die, like 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 creepo about it, like John Fetterman, or mm-hmm. just he was one of those like fucking um celebrities whose agents told him to sign a fucking letter or some shit. You know what I mean? I got you. But so I don't know. I I don't know off the top of my my head. But I will say though, like it's like. Yeah, it's like the only like the thing like people are like losing their shit over like the the transgender line there, and I'm like, I'm not gonna speak for like the transgender ho- the trans homies I got, but like as far as I could read, like it wasn't necessarily like a diss there, and even then, like, I, I he mentioned it more than anything. I just I, I don't know. I just it was such like the like, people are like losing their shit over it, like saying, oh, old Am's back. It's pretty fuck like. I'll give credit where credit is due. Eminem certainly didn't. Um, he's certainly like more with the times than a, a lot of you know artists from his generation. Well, I think that happened also not like his OG Slim Shady sound, but like I remember that Marshall Mathers LP two had like a little bit of that craziness. I'm um, coming at everybody type vibe. So I don't think it ever went away. I think he just learned how to, you know take more so from like what's going on in the industry he, and shit like that he, he stopped doing opiates and went to therapy like that's Literally. what happened that's what happened like he chilled the fuck out he melded like snoop snoop was on some like you know you know rough shit back in the day and now like he's like he's a just a grandfather man. smoking weed like <laughs> like, he literally, he literally made a fucking children's show for for his grandkids to watch. For his grandkids to watch, and shit. And it's like, and it's like doing like positive affirmations over a hip hop beat, and it's adorable. You know, so it's like, you know, Eminem's always been like a private person. He hasn't necessarily like always been loud and shit. Like, you know, say like people dislike him for a myriad of different reasons. Like his a lot of his discography definitely doesn't necessarily hold up today for a lot of reasons. But like I think if you're going for old music to reflect the times, then definitely not. Yeah, hundred percent. It's he is it is a lot of his discography is a product of his time. And I think that, you know, it's okay to enjoy that. That's fine. Uh, you know, it's like it's not like Eminem, like, say what you will about He's him, best like, fucking friends with Elton John. He's the opposite of a actual hater of the LGBTQ I, I, I wasn't even talking about that. I was, like, talking about him, like, being, like, you know, representing black culture and stuff. He does it, as far as I said, as far as other, as, like, from one white dude to another, he does, like, he's a pretty, pretty gracious fucking about it. He's not, the best white rapper there is, like, yeah, for yeah. as long as he's been around. Yeah. Who are we kidding? Nobody can say that there is a better white rapper than him. No. <laughs> Macklemore? Don't get me wrong. He just released a great song. I'm not coming at him, but think about and I'm re- And I'm realizing that Macklemore, like, most people know him from the heist and thrift shop, which is Literally. very much not him. <laughs> that was his See? commercial I'm gonna get a bag album. And he's been. I mean, the only other guy that you could even put in the same league, I would say, is either like. I mean, fuck it. Is Vanilla Ice still kicking? No, I give it to Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice. That's Vanilla, who I give it to. Vanilla, <laughs> Vanilla Ice literally is just uh, Vanilla, Vanilla Ice is like making a killing off of HG of his HGTV like reruns and shit. And good for him. <laughs> hey, listen, dude. Like he, he, he. Like I can't. You, you know, you know, know. Do you know? Do you know? What I, you know what I think killed his career in rap? What that Jim Carrey performance on SNL? Probably. It wouldn't surprise me. I can't play it for y'all because you know NBC is a bunch of Nazis uh, in terms of YouTube copyright system. But you know, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get this next thing I want to talk about, but I think you were going to say something. No, go, no. You're queued up. Go for it. Is it this? 
Oh, I know what I wanted to talk to you about. Did you hear about the bullshit? And I was I was mad when I found out about this. I mm. the, the the rant I did about it was so incoherent I had to put it on my second channel. Um did you hear about Microsoft adding uh an AI that basically records everything you do for up to three months to Windows 11. Oh, that's so nice. I'm so glad that they did that. That's exactly it, what everybody wants. It's called Microsoft Recall. And what it does, like, yeah, Recall, like what all of those fucking, you know, computers that were sent out to Best Buy are going to be done when, you know, this eventually leads to a gigantic fucking security break. It, it, it stores locally on your screen, on your, on your, on your machine the past however many months of doing it. And here's the thing. You can set it to not record at all. But you but by default it records the past three months of like whatever you're doing on your computer. And mm. it's and 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 basically everybody came out of media and was like, this is a giant security issue. Literally. And it's like saying like, oh, it's all stored locally on your machine, so there's no worry about like. I'm like, motherfucker, that's the most risky place for it to be. Yeah, because that's where if it all was all if it was automatically encrypted and sent up to Microsoft Azure, I'd feel better about it. Security Even then, wise. I'd be like, security wise, without a doubt, because when it comes to cybersecurity, I might as well be eating fucking sand with a spoon. But right. uh, what's it called? Even then, I'm like, do y'all really need this information? Like, is it that required? You know what else it'll be? You, it can be? <laughs> you know what else this will result in? Um, warrants. Like, police off, like, police, uh, cops can uh, demand that in discovery and for warrants and shit. See, if they do it for child porn, go off. I'm down. If they right. do it for pirating, uh oh. <laughs> Here's my thing, though, right? Like, I recognize that the child predation issues are a gigantic issue, but the thing I need you guys, I need you to understand is, is that the amount of like, no, 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 I definitely the, the agree. use the use for that is so tiny compared to what they would be doing. I mean, they would... personally, that's why uh, not to get too too political, but that's why I don't buy the whole gun control thing fully. I'm also like, listen, it's a percentage of people. Not that I'm saying it's not a problem. But <laughs> my thing is, is, is that the, the, my, here's my, my my only counter towards that is, is, is that, you know, I don't think everybody should have one. Not no, saying that. no, my thing is, is that there absolutely should be red flag laws because there's fucking lunatics who shouldn't have firearms. And, you know, unfortunately, the motherfuckers that are going in to take your firearms, the cops are, are the same motherfuckers that probably shouldn't be having guns in the first place. I'm glad, actually, that we brought this little topic up. I just want to talk about one thing here. Uh, it's a small subject, nothing important. But did you see Uvalde parents going after Activision and the maker of the uh, actual weapon? And they did not name the goddamn police office that let their children die. I have no idea what you're talking about. Please give me the rundown. Uh, so that you Hey, I said the thing. Yeah, you did. The name. So you remember Uvalde, where uh, in Texas, all those parents wanted to go into the school. The uh, police officers wouldn't allow them. And then they They're waited They're playing an Candy Crush on their phone. What, 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 Literally. What, 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 yeah. With all that despicable shit, right? For yeah. whatever reason, these parents, instead of choosing to uh, directly sue the police office for negligence or, you know, waiting too long, they are going after Call of Duty and the manufacturer of the weapon that was used in the killing. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that we have a horrible gun issue in this country, a horrible mass shooting issue in this country. But going after a video game company... The, the video game thing? Very stupid. The manufacturer... The manufacturer, I'm like, okay, if you can get the money from them... I can take go it. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for I'm it. like, you can... You, in my eyes, you should be legally allowed to sue the manufacturer, but the manufacturer should be legally allowed to say, hey, 98, 99% of our customers don't kill anybody when they buy our product. So... Yeah, the, which is like... Which is really, like, wild to me. Like, because here's the thing about gun control, right? Um, and I used to like use call it purchase reform to be a little, you know, calling it gun control. Like most motherfuckers, we like 
the, the only reason why I'm in, I, I am not for gun control at present time is because I want as many people with my politics to have firearms as humanly possible because right-wing lunatics are, are running asunder a, a and uh, we need to be able, and, and left-wing folks need to be able to defend ourselves from, you know, fascist tyranny. And the fascist tyranny isn't going to come from the government. It's going to come from some chuckle fuck down in Slower Lower who hates black people in Wilmington. And once the and once there is a perception that nothing that the, that society's breaking down, they're all going to get in their Ford F one fifties and their with their beer bellies and drive up here trying to like you know take revenge on you know all of the fucking working class folks up here who don't look like them. For the for the perceived slight of like ruining the country or some shit like that like yeah. I, I my job like my, the purpose of firearms for me is not to overthrow the government or defend from government tyranny. The, I, my idea of a firearm is to protect myself protect myself in my community from Billy Joe Jim Bob and spray his gray matter out on Delaware Avenue. That's the fucking uh, purpose of firearms. For me. Evan, I want you to make me a graphic that's like a fishing rod going out and casting the line. So I could be like, all right, now I'm reeling you back in because I want to talk about the fact. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Uh, just the fact that it, it's this bullshit 90s argument that video games make people violent all over again. And I just yeah. don't understand in an example where somebody can actually be held accountable for for waiting. And that resulted in children's lives being lost. Those people are still not being held accountable, yeah. even though a fucking game publisher, they sued Activision. They sued Activision. So I'm like, what the fuck? Cops <laughs> have 50 years of precedent of courts long stroking their cocks, preventing them from being held accountable to their actions. They have the precedent out in New York, uh, where two cops basically watched a guy try to stop somebody who was like actively like being like menacing people get stabbed almost to death. And then after he, the guy let the guy uh, was almost dead, and the guy stopped and breathed for a second. The cops then came through and grabbed the dude. That so was you, that that that, that died, was the case. that was they he's, just he's, let him off. that dude who they died, this wasn't even the dude who they who was stabbing people. This was the dude who got stabbed, and he sued the police department for not protecting him. And the courts determined that the the police officers do not have an are not obligation to save are, you. They do not have the obligation to put themselves into danger to save you. And it's like, then why are you cops? <laughs> well, that well, you also have the you know the you know the concept of qualified immunity, the legal you know idea that if that if it if if it is a if it is a position if it is something that is being done in the service w uh, while you are doing your job, you um you can't get nailed for it. Now, granted, here's my thing. Even when they're breaking protocol, even when they're going against the handbook and all that shit, they're still covered by qualified immunity. Like that's, the, the, that, court, well, the courts are so thing, fucking cucked about it. It's insane. This is the thing that I was trying to say. What I don't understand is after Derek Chauvin's civil trial, not his criminal trial, but his civil trial where he actually got, you know, taken to the cleaners, his, I think it was his retirement or his pension got actually like swallowed the fuck up, all that shit. I thought that would have been precedent for these bigger issues because it's in the court literature. Like that's Here's, how this the shit The problem happened. is, is that when judges look at these cases, they say, if it didn't happen exactly this way, it's and it's not it's not a breach. So if somebody leans on a person's neck to the point where they asphyxiate, then that could be considered not covered under qualified immunity. But if you choke a motherfucker out in a in a chokehold that is allowed by your apart by by the uh, uh, department. Even in their, regardless of their of, of whether or not they're, if they're even if they're not resisting, that's okay. Because the problem is, is that the way judges look at it, and it's this is all the way. So even if you get a judge that's like, yeah, you're a fucking murderer, and throws a book at them on appeal at the next circuit, there's a lot of judges that that genuinely that will gen, that will look through the lens of qualified immunity, on unle and unless it meets an impossible standard of grievance and you know in malpractice. 
they get off. And so what ends up uh, happening is, is that the only recourse is for them to sue the town, which is just people shooting them. Sh the people who are suing the town, the town or city, are just like, great, there's a bunch of fucking tax dollars out of, you know, our schools, our roads, our everything, because... We, because we because what we really want, which is nailing the fucking cops who did this to the wall, that can't happen. Yeah, but then it only damages the credibility of these parents and of this situation because then nobody has anything to go off on in future cases. And regard, everybody... Wait, wait, the parents? What do you mean? Yeah, because uh, the parents, it's not the town. It's the parents of the children who actually got, who passed away, who are suing these companies who are reaching out and uh, Facebook as well. And what other option do they have? Like, well, what I'm trying to say is this only damages their credibility in everybody's eye because they're not seen as grieving parents trying to fight for justice. They're now seen as people who are just trying to get monetary value for the horrible shit they've been through. And although which is, which, that, to be fair, they deserve it. Not saying that they don't. I'm just saying the way that optics work, <laughs> it will go literally against their, uh, what's it called? What they're trying to achieve. You get what I'm saying? Is it like, like, if I could be a little fed posty for a second. And, and, go ahead, be the little devil's ev advocate. <laughs> everything I'm saying here is in Minecraft, it's in Roblox, it's not in real life. I'm just saying, I think at this point, the only thing recourse we have with police officers in this country in terms of them seeing accountability is them being retaliated against by the community and in minecraft in minecraft Just and, make it sure. and, and and cops that you know are egregious are put down in minecraft and they by and large just you know the community like the community like like if there's not going to be justice in an official sense like it, like riots are the, 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 you know, riots are the voice of the unheard. And it doesn't, necessarily... I think you, I think you agree with this statement, right? If, if ending qualified immunity or going after the pockets of these police officers who make heinous mistakes or decisions on the job, whatever it is at the end of the day, if that cannot happen, if that is not granted to the people, then inevitably we are going to reach a boiling point because people are going to keep saying, you keep telling us you're protecting and serving us, but even the court identifies the fact that you don't have to protect us. You owe us no obligation. Most people don't know that. And when Most people, people don't know that. When people start to wake up to that fact and get told that on, you know, on mass, and they start seeing what's going on under the guise of that reality, that's when it's going to either be, hey, we got to end qualified immunity for people who are going to who are going to court over shit, or there's going to be retaliation in Minecraft on all of these people in law enforcement. And it's a scary thought to think about because also the part that never gets fixated on is the good people that require police officers. But if you live in a state where uh, they're, I'm not saying this in a way where they don't deserve the constant, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, hatred and uh, explanation of, exactly. But then the police officers use their, uh, their ignorance and they weaponize it because then when i call in a place like this los angeles and i say lapd i just got robbed can you come here they're gonna be like is the person still there no do you know where the person is no we'll come we'll give you a, we'll write a statement not really sure what's gonna happen after that because All, the, the only purpose of that is just to, so you can go to the insurance company the insurance no, company no. needs a police statement and that's it I'm just saying, I'm just saying that the police aren't doing their job anymore under the guise that they can't, right? That's what they claim. But the real thing of it is they're just scared because so many people are trying to hold them accountable. I've noticed, I don't, uh, let's see if you agree with this statement, but I've noticed as growing up in this uh, sect of living, right? This generation, whatever you want to call it, this is hell. You can call it hell. 
accountability is a bad word for a lot of people. Accountability is a bad word only to people who don't want to be held accountable for their bad actions. The And the thing that I'm trying to say is on a person-to-person -person scale, I won't say it's like a social media type thing because our generation loves to call fucking horrible people out, and I respect that about us. 100%. But on a person-to-person -person, uh, scale, I feel like accountability has become another trigger word for instilling uh you know uh having any number of thing come up for you and i don't agree with the fact that an entity a pro uh, uh, public but really private entity as the police office as the police station in every 50 fucking state has this understanding that like hey even if there is a shitty one of us we got to protect him we can't we can't agree with them that thin blue line <laughs> Yeah. And it's so stupid. It's so dumb. You know, and here's the thing here's about, my thing also. You Ellis, know got, me. Ellis got cop gangs. Oh, I know. Who are you telling? I know. I know. I see it. What the fuck? But Evan, the only thing I want to say is the idea that you don't hold the people in your house accountable is so alien to me. It's so alien. <laughs> you spent most of your fucking childhood trying to hold, try to hold your your angry, yelly ass grandparents to, to Old account for their New York Jews. Oh, New York Jews, trying to hold them accountable. That <laughs> accent still thick, it thick as the day they left. Thanks. I love your I love your grandparents. They don't like my ass anymore, but I like your grandparents. Fuck them. They probably won't even remember what happened. <laughs> You say that you you landed sharp. You, 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 your your grand your uncle your 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 granddaddy may have a bit like a bit of Alzheimer's setting in, but like you you your auntie auntie Linda's auntie Linda's a little woo woo, but she's still sharp as attack where it, where it counts. True, true, true. Like she but, may she I'm may believe sure she, 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 she may believe in tar she may believe in tarot readings and Donald Trump, but you know. <laughs> Oh, by the way, did you hear the former? Oh uh... uh, yes, of course we we, we must. No, talk no, no, about no, no. The Home Alone two actor was found guilty on thirty four felonies. That's all. That's all it is. That's all it is. Okay. <laughs> let's not let's not that's get a, into anything that's else. That's a great. That's a great way to put it. Here's my thing. Uh, here's the thing. Do I want him to go to jail time? I I've thought about this a lot. So if 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 I may. Go Please, on a, a, a I won't. I won't reel you in. You take your time. <laughs> okay. So the thing I want to note. So the thing I want to note about Donald Trump getting nailed to the wall, right? Is the judge has three options. One lame, one funny, one very funny. I just want to say one thing. I was what? watching Bill Maher last night. John Waters was on. I fucking hate Bill Maher. He's such John a John Waters is a funny boomer. Though. I'm not sure if you know who he is, but he is a funny goddamn guy. And he said, if the judge gives Trump house arrest, you will hear Melania scream from New York to the White House. And that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, big facts. No, because here's the thing. Like, like here the judge this judge is already like under constant threat as is you know he's already got security detail the whole nine years and the most logical thing that would probably happen given that trump is a huge defender given that you know 34 felony short like these, these are the types of crimes like these financial crimes are the types of things that normal people will be like oh you're going to jail for a long time type of thing so but you know, Donald Trump is a very wealthy man, so, you know, they have the ability to extract a lot of tax, of, of fine money out of him, you know, as an option. That is most likely what will happen. What is most likely to happen is the judge will issue a fat fucking fine. That is the most logical thing to happen because it, it is, it, it prevents the, it prevents everything I'm about to talk about from, and surrounding it from the things I'm about to talk about from happening. And also, it's it's just, I'm pretty sure that ever, the judge is like, I don't want to fucking deal with this anymore. That's what's most likely. What's second to most likely to happen is um, house arrest. 
and house arrest would be very fun would be funny not very funny but funny it's it, it'd be very funny but it wouldn't be the big funny it would be very funny because we would just get Hundreds of tweets a day from Donald J. Trump because he is stuck in his apartment losing his fucking mind. He is stuck in mar a lot probably in... Pro no, he'd have to stay in New York because it's a New York case. He'd be stuck in his New York apartment losing his shit. And Melania would probably be like, I'm going to Mar-a-Lago, bye! And that's exactly <laughs> what would happen. And what would happen... And he would... And, and this, would do, this would do a couple things. Um... He wouldn't be able to go out and campaign. He, the only time he would really be leaving the his his house arrest would if be for going to sit on trial other trials around the country he's having to deal with, like in Georgia, or Arizona. Um, and it would be and it would just be sad. And we, we would wake up every morning to see thirteen new tweets that Trump was uh, tweeting out while he was taking his two thirty in the morning shit. Okay. The, the last one. The mm. big funny is if he goes to prison. Now, he wouldn't go to prison for, you know, the rest of his life, but he would probably go to prison, like, given the things that he had, he'd probably go to prison for an entire presidential term. Yeah, but um, you wanna know you wanna know the part that should make your brain have a civil war? What? He could still be elected in prison. And then and, we would have a sitting president president in yeah. prison. He can uh, Jesus. He, he can. He can. It, you know, there. That's a quirk of our system. We don't let felons fucking vote, but one. But we don't prevent felons from running for office. Federal but, office, state and local, nah. Fair enough. But I digress. Um, uh, the big fun, him going to prison, would, which I think would, which I love the idea of for for me to. Like, sense of justice, I want him in prison for the shit he's done, blah, 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 whatever. But mainly at this point, it's for the comedic, like, chops of it. You don't think it makes the uh, his supporters worse, more violent, or reactionary? They're... Brian? His support, I'm saying his support, that they... His supporters are already... They don't really have that much further right to go. I'm saying they seem this this is my point, right? Not that their rhetoric isn't extremely violent or uh, you know, uh disconcerting, whatever you want to call it. I'm saying, do you think if he is actually thrown in jail, which we both agree is probably not likely, right? But if he is, that that will lend credibility to the whole they're stealing the country away from you. I am the only thing holding like holding this in balance i think that's what would happen the there is red... no but there's uh, i'm sorry to interrupt i apologize but uh no there, there is nobody that wasn't going to vote for donald trump no no, no. not that it changes the uh voting of it in any way i'm yeah. saying that his vote that his supporters get more confident get more uh you know, bombastic about their attempts. They've already shown what would happen if he lost the election, right? With January 6th. I don't really buy the argument that they would just accept him being thrown in jail. That's what no, I'm saying. No, no, because that, you know, because the thing that would surround him getting thrown in jail would become an immediate uh, national crisis. Um, That's what I'm saying. Which would be, again, very funny seeing. You know, a bunch of fucking lunatic, you know, suburbanites with dyed hair and beer bellies uh, trying to break into, you know, fucking, you know, Rikers Island, you know, or some shit. You yeah, know, but I know I know you and me don't have the same perspective on this. I'm just like, I don't want another three years of liberals yelling about the same fucking thing over and over and over again. And that being used in ex as an excuse to stay as shitty as they fucking are. Shit libs <laughs> are going to do shit lib shit. My thing is, is that I hate the right wing more than I hate, you know, centrist liberals, like resistance types, you know. Like, my thing is, is that at the end of the day, seeing these you know trump obsessed deranged individuals coping seething and molding would bring me an undue level of joy oh yeah i agree i'm not and, saying and, 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 and so i also don't live in new york 
Okay. And also, most of the motherfuckers that, like, the thing is, is that you probably would have a convergence of a lot of the people trying to, like, break into a prison or something. Like, the, like I, like, let's just say, like, hypothetically, they go to the fucking prison he's in. He's in a supermax prison. Not because mm -hmm. he's dangerous, but because, you know... He's a former president. Well, president, <laughs> right. And, you know, there might be people trying to siege it or whatever bullshit. Fine. My thing is, is that... He, no, I don't believe that a ragtag group of unorganized mass of of, of, of of dipshits is going to like be a threat to the National Guard that would inevitably be brought in. But here's what I think if he goes to prison is to bring it back to funny. Yeah. I think it would be very funny to see the Republican Party with Trump being in prison immediately turn it into... They like, turn into the party of like positive treatment of felons in prison. Well, you want to know the funniest part? Just like, it's just like, like isn't of... it so sad that Donald Trump can't watch TV like in the privacy of Brazil? Isn't it sad that he has to share a cell? I just, it's just, it's gonna immediately, it's just gonna turn into, you know, jails in this country are gonna just turn into, you know, like like fifty percent of our GDP is gonna go to that shit, and it's gonna be like you get into jail. And you get home from like getting sloppy toppy from uh, the preferred gender of your choice, and like you, it, like as you you are go get get the get your your buffet at dinner, and then you go back to your single cell with a with a double king sized bed and you know nine hundred thread count sheets as you settle into bed, and people are just fucking you know holding up Seven Elevens just to get back into prison and shit. Like that 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 to me is funny. That to well, me, the, the that funny, to me would be funny. What's fun. even more funny on top of that is if he is sent to prison, guess what's three or four days right after? Yeah, the RNC, the yep. National Convention. Yep. Here's, my, here's my thing, if we're if just to bring it grounded for a second. And I know we're talking politics. I know we don't typically do politics on here. but It's unprecedented times. It's unprecedented. Give us a break. Can I, can I just go <laughs> 10 minutes, please? Without living through unprecedented times, can I just not have a once in a lifetime event happen, happen for one fucking, day? I just want one day. day. I just want one day where I can go outside and immediately not have the sun melting the skin off my body, while political, like, or well, political criminals, like. Roll by on a on, on, on a flatbed, sniffing cocaine off a, off a off a fucking hooker's ass, and then immediately going to go bomb another country with a tactical nuke. Like I just want the peace for twenty four hours. I beg. Well, you, I you want to know what you want to know what went completely under the news radar, even though it was released in a news article. What? And I got this from Tim Dillon, so I'm not saying that this is my own thought. Uh, but T -t Tim Dillon's funny. And very knowledgeable. Uh, what's it called? The fact that the U.S. government or whatever fucking researching company, whoever it is, they are finally now accepting the fact that uh, either that Saudi Arabia had something to do with 9-11. Uh, uh, and it's like, yeah, you fucking idiots. No shit. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was, was, was like Saudi was Saudi Arabia directly involved in the plot? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But what they did, what they were, was direct funders of groups like Al Qaeda. Exactly, and then we completely like, decimated. Like that, like that's not that, that's 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 not new information. Like no, no, yeah. I know, obviously, fucking not. I knew that. I'm just saying that something as ground like in 20 years. There is definitely going to be an article that says we now fully accept that the Wuhan lab is the cause for COVID. I like and nobody or a perfect, a more perfect example. We now fully accept the fact that the FBI and CIA had a hand in killing Kennedy. Like just something so groundbreaking at a certain time that years later, nobody gives a fuck about. And it's like. Fuck, it's like man. it's like it's like the government constantly admitting that aliens exist and we're just, and people just don't give a fuck. And everybody's like, "Listen, I got enough shit to fucking deal with here. I can't. Yeah, like, I can't like, handle listen, it." Listen, <laughs> listen. The only thing that I like, listen, like, I'm rent's that too damn young. high. Rent's too damn high. Milk cart, like gallons of milk are set are six ninety nine. 
And I, mean, I made, I made and the motherfucking decision. billionaires are trying to leave us. I Fine. made that decision young about religion. I was like, yo, listen, there is too much shit on this fucking earth for me to miss out on just because I want to have a good next life. Fuck all oh. that. I'm going to live here. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, uh, uh, dead ass. Like, say, uh, you know, I, I am going to go sit through a fucking like service on Sunday so I can get some free food for it's the house, Easter. some groceries. For why? Oh, just for that? Okay. I oh, respect yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm poor. Dude, I have to get $100 by the 11th. You better be selling that boy pussy. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm literally going to go find possessions of mine and sell them at this point. Because, yeah. and here's the thing. I, normally, I'd use that for my phone bill. But, I, but you know what I have to use it for? The domain name for this fucking website. HI Media GG. Damn. So. Damn. So, folks, by the way, I'm just saying. Help a nigga out. <laughs> if you want to help a brother out, uh, you, you can go to HIMedia.gg slash live. I've got an entire fucking menu of thingamadoohickeys that you can make me do, including taking a fucking tapeworm shot for $10. And if you buy 10 of them, bitches, I will take 10 of them on camera. Back to back? Back to fucking back. I am a... I, 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 There's nothing at this point I won't do for $100. Sans giving up my asshole or breaking the vow... My, my, like, my, like my vows of monogamy with my partner. Understandable. Understandable. I will eat dog food on camera. I will do whatever the fuck. Wow. I'm trying to think of a good way to transition this. But go to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because something else your fans can also spend money on after they send you money first. Y'all better send him money if I'm giving y'all the hookup with this. But this is, a, uh, this is a great uh, bundle for people who don't really have a lot of PC games. Uh, the Star Wars collection is usually... What the fuck is going on with my camera? It's just fuzzy as fuck. Uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a few different of uh, Ultra Kill. Ultra Kill is a. I'll just say I understand. Like obviously, if you don't already own Game of the Year version of Fallout Four, get that. Definitely um, pick it up. It's all DLC, and that is extremely easy for modding. Um, I will if you can pick if you want to pick it. I, I'll I'll be dead ass. Uh, if you're gonna pick two games out of this list, personally, I would pick obvious if you, Fallout if you don't already have it, and Ultra Kill. Ultra I would say very good. Listen, I'm gonna be so honest with y'all. Uh, the five game option is really good. I only say that because the Star Wars collection includes a lot of retro games uh, in the Star Wars universe, including Star Wars Battlefront Two OG. It includes Kotor One and Two. Uh, fucking. Which, a whole by the bunch way, of the OG servers. If you buy, if you, if you, if you, if they're these are Steam keys and you put it through Steam, I'm pretty sure that you can still play with people with the OG bundle on Steam. That's fucking dope. I didn't know about that. But uh, and, Star and, Wars: and, The Force Unleashed and one and you, two. And if you can't, there, I think there's like online peer-to-peer -peer servers that you can join and do. I'll be right back. I'm just turning on the light. All right, cool. Hey, I would use the uh, uh, the choice of five, and then I would get also Forgive Me, Father Two is in there. It's literally a uh, relatively new game. It's in early access, but it's fucking amazing. It's a fun little uh, roguelike shooter. Uh, there is. I personally didn't I didn't know about Overkill, so I got the Saints Row Gold Edition. I'm not going to play it, but I got it anyway. Uh, but yeah, I got Forgive Me Father 2, uh, Saints Row, Mon Fallout 4. You you would... I, I think you if you gave Monster Hunter World, there's a 50-50 shot you'd love it. I played the OG Monster Hunter. I know it's not the same game, but I was not into it. So Was it, was it the actual mechanics of the gameplay or just like the whole concept of going out I on played, missions grabbing I played shit, lost, coming back to base i played lost planet which is the second one so i don't really know i just played like the beginning of it and i did not enjoy the vibe of it at all so i'm kind of like i might give it a try if it's ever on like game pass or playstation premium or whatever that, that, but that's fair honestly i'm not a necessarily a huge fan of it myself um 
Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I want to like it because I have a lot of friends that enjoy it. I just, I, I, I have a difficult time. Mm. Uh, also, Devil Man, uh, Devil May Cry 5. Great game. I mean, it's Cap- Capcom. It's, I don't know if it's the best in the series because I really don't have experience with it. But a little bit of it. It's okay. It's, but then again, I'm not a giant Devil May Cry fan, if I'm being perfectly honest. Neither oh. am I. I'm, I'm just trying to give people suggestions, though. But yeah, uh, for the for the two game option, it comes out to fifteen dollars. For the three game option, comes out to like what twenty two dollars. And then for the five game option, it's thirty five dollars. Nice. I'm gonna show I mean, you. I'm gonna show you another video. Okay. Uh, why is it in a cage? Because it growled at me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, lo- I I like my little frog warrior princess. Do you save scum in that game? Absolutely. fucking lootly. Are you kidding yeah. me? I was gonna t- I was gonna say, if you just take them random one or two fucking dice rolls or a nat zero like they love to fucking give a nigga. Oh my god. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. I would like to do like a, a run where I don't save scum whatsoever. And, and just you do just that. accept it. And, and just accept it. I feel like that'd be fun and interesting. But like... No, what the fuck is up with kissing that goddamn squid? That fucking game wanted me to kiss that motherfucker so goddamn bad. I was like, yeah. fuck off. Yo, fuck you off. All the, wait, you're all the way in Act 3? Goddamn. No, 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 no. Uh, in Act 1, when you find him after you uh, get him out of the uh, ship, right? After you crash land the ship, when you first... Uh, you get a few... Spoilers for opinions. BG3. Spoilers for BG3. Just It's literally the first, like, level. Like, after you get off of the ship. It, nobody even knows what the fuck the ship is about. I don't even know why you're on that ship at first. So don't even tell me. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But you walk up to the guy who is piloting the ship. And I think if you don't kill him in that final battle on the ship, he is still alive. When you walk up to him, the game literally wants you to kiss him. He They, they were like, he's investing your mind. Do, boo, 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 boo. And then... I've done, yeah. I want to be clear. I've done that sequence a lot of times it's more of him just trying to control you and get you to see him yeah to like you get killed and he comes back and is revived with all this fucking health but it's like under the guise of him like calling out to you and desiring you so i say it's kissing so i i know it's not actually but that, that's that, how that that's so that's a that's that is certainly a read on it <laughs> So, well, everything else in the goddamn game is about fucking why the fuck couldn't this be? Uh, this, like, like it's like, it's like, why is there a tactical RPG in my dating scene? Or why is there a, why is there a hentai uh, uh, tentacle monster in my fucking tactical RPG? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Just you fucking wait. Oh no, I, I bet I bet because because like those. if if that's the read you got off of that. I, I talk to me when you hit Act Three. All right, that's all I'm gonna say. But I'm just saying the amount. I'm not of times, about to spoil nothing for you. No, 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 no problem. But the amount of times that I fucking rolled a not zero just in that interaction, I was like, "Come on, I don't want my main character to die. He shouldn't die." So tell. Well, here. here all right. So I know all the companions have revive uh, uh, scrolls that I could use. To, and and, uh, and there's also withers. And I could also use the guy from the uh, uh, ruins to bring back my people. I already got him, so I know. I know. But I'm just like, fuck that. I would much rather save scum, uh, find out all the uh, dialogue options, and then choose the right one. Fair enough. Um, Question, if you don't mind. Yeah. What class are you? What race are you? Oh, uh, I think I'm a druid. I'm a druid with... Uh... Not rogue. Maybe rogue. I think rogue. Honestly, like druids are pretty are pretty goofy. Like they have some excellent like obviously they have like the transformations. Like Owlbear by um, itself is like goofy as shit in terms of uh power. And even without that and you're and you want to stay in human form, like Chalet the get like the Shalele cantrip mm. is just bonkers by itself. Can you explain something to me? Every yes. time I use that fucking move. It always misses. Which one? The Shaleo. 
Well, the, well, the however you say it. The per, well, it's and then you what you do with it is you enchant your weapon. That's what it is. I know. And, I'll enchant. And, I can never land a hit with that active. I can only ever land a hit without that active. And I have the right weapon equipped where it says you can only use it on certain types of weapons. I have that specific set of so goddamn let me, weapons. Let me ask a question. Yeah. How high is your casting on, like, your primary casting? I haven't played the game in, like, a so, week. I don't know. So, all right. Because if your wisdom is low, because what Shillelagh does is it makes it so, if I remember correctly, I think it makes it use your your casting modifier as the thing for damage rolls when you're trying to hit motherfuckers. Okay. And if your wisdom ain't super high, which I mean, it should be higher because you're a druid and that's your main. Oh, charlatan. Casting. I think that's what my class is. So like extra persuasion. Char charlatan is uh, your background. That's your background. Then whichever whichever one gives you like extra uh, persuasion, intimidation, and something yeah. else. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, thief or something. Uh, something a lock pick. I know I can lock pick. So, so tell me, who have you met in your party? Who do you have in your party so far? So far, we have everybody on the uh, game box except for uh, Housen. So you don't have. So you have Carlac. You have Will. You have Lazel. Oh no, no, no. Just people on the uh, like uh, on the box screen. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gail. I have Gail, Wide L, uh, Gail, Asterian, yes. Will, maybe Will. I'm Will's not sure the black that. dude. Yes, then I do. Well, yeah, uh, the the, the character just as a, a minor spoiler, doesn't matter, whatever. The the or, the origin characters that the, that are you can be your companions, that, that uh all all of which are also are romanceable are Gail Asterian, Shadowheart because she's first, Will, Will Lazel and Carlac. Is it Shadowheart the first person you could get after Lazel? Lay Lay yes, you can yeah. you can leave the you can leave the Nautiloid. With Lazy, with Lazel and Shep. Did you not save her? I save her every time. Okay. She's you know, base white girl. If I don't want to romance anybody else, and she can fucking change disguises. I will say though, like trickery domain cleric is really dog shit. If, like, here's the thing. Do do. Is she the worst character out of all of them? Yes. Is she basically only good for, like, healing and shit? Absolutely. Is Shadowheart... Um... Is Shadowheart, um... A racist? Know, yes. Is Shadowheart better if you swap her domain to Nature or Tempest, Cleric, or, like, or whatever, losing the class change... Yes, you can change all the classes of the origin character that you so desire. Okay. Yes. But Very quick. I'm, ra tri I'm raising the white flag. Go for it. But I, it's not about the subject. Keep in mind where we are. Are you okay with me taking like a 20 minute break? Because I got to. <laughs> yeah. Unless you want to end it. No. It's up go, to you. No, go take a 20 minute break. I, I, God knows I eat, I made some bad pasta today that been make me shit my brains out all day by damn self. So I'll be right back. Uh, All right, and... Brian has effectively cleared his bowels. We were talking about Baldur's Gate and it being a dating set. Um, I will turn on your video. Oh yeah, that's right. You don't have you don't have my video. My apologies. But I, what I was going to say was is um something you should uh uh when you get I'm just gonna say mm -hmm. when you get to the point where you can meet Minthara. Knock her out. Knock her out? Knock her out. Don't kill her. Or kill her. Don't kill her. Knock her out. Okay. She's evil, but she's hot and evil. And she can be a follower. Okay. And Work. you can romance her. She's harder to romance on a good playthrough by far. Especially if you don't side with her during her quest when you would initially knock her out. But if you decide to go against her in that moment, 
kill the other people, just knock her out. Okay. Um, cool. Without spoiling anything, because um, I, ca- I, I, I kind of want to send you a, uh, a Minthar, like it's just like a some of the lines from some of the characters, because like I don't like any of the guys, obviously. Like I, I feel like I would like maybe do a romance through with Gale or Astaria just for funsies, just to see what happens. But yeah. like every single one of the women in Baldur's Gate that are romanceable hit a different thing for me and it's wild <laughs> i'm attracted um, i'm attracted to all of them it's like carlac lazel minthara are kind of tied but if i had to pick it's carlac lazel minthara shadowheart okay like the only thing that's like every, all of them else are more interesting like shadowheart's just an e-girl you can fix that's yeah, it pretty much that's it who's racist I don't like the fact she's a racist. You say that, but like Lazel, like 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 la- la- the Gith Yankee are racist, like all black people. No, I know. I'm just like, at least they don't like humans in general. I'm just like, you specifically don't like their race. That's a that's fucked. Yeah, it's fair. They don't like humanoids outside of themselves. Yeah. But finally. I, just so we could get off of the Boulder's Gate 3 topic, if anybody has been plugging their ears, yeah. uh, I want to discuss mods and the fucking bullshit I went through just trying to download one texture pack for this fucking game. Bullshit. First, I do some bullshit research where I find out about something called Mod Organizer 2. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be simple. This no. is this is exactly Mod Organizer 2 for. is like, I use Mod Organizer. You're a newbie. You use Vortex. Mod Organizer 2, that's Hold like on. top the tier. Reason, no, no, no. The reason I thought Mod Organizer was a more basic inter- slash like beginning intermediate for a a uh, PC modder in the first stages of their fucking modding experience. I thought, because I read about you it. and thought, Ooh. hold on, wait, wait, wait. I read the fact that you can literally launch it either through the Epic Game Store where I have, uh, uh, you know, Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition, or you can launch it straight through Mod Organizer. I didn't know Vortex had its own, like, launch system through Vortex, right? So... I found out that if you download Modern Organizer, you could play the vanilla game when you load it through uh, the original, you know, uh, gaming space, or you could play it with all the mods enabled in Mod Organizer. God damn it, I couldn't get one to work. I couldn't get one fucking one to work. It was one texture pack and I couldn't do it. It took me like three hours. Finally, I understood. I was like, fuck Mod Organizer. I think it's a problem with this system. I don't think it's a problem with the mods itself, right? So... Mod organizer requires a lot of finagling. It's it's amazing once it's once you once you understand it, but like it took me a while to understand it too. Jesus Vort- fucking Christ! Vort- I was yelling at my computer. <laughs> and also, the people that made mod organizer don't really work on it anymore because Nexus hired them to work on Vortex. Well, that's good to fucking know because Noelia was also over my fucking shoulder trying to figure out if I would be able to also mod uh stardew valley in the process stardew valley came up fine in fucking mod organizer you know what didn't show up even though i have both of them fucking downloaded fucking fallout 3 and fallout new vegas ah it was the worst thing i'm gonna keep it a buck with you dude i'm gonna keep it a hundred you would be better off just installing fault tales of two wastelands over new vegas no no no. i i understand that completely and when i do my uh, Tales of the Wasteland uh, playthrough, I would definitely do that. I want to play the base games first because I have never finished them. I want to get through the full story, even if I have... I just want texture mods enabled for right now. You just then want, to, you just, you just want it to look a little prettier. That's all. And to play a little nicer. Like with Fallout 3, I want... Uh, you know, aim down sights. That's about as far as I'll go in terms of actual modding. But I yeah. just want the game to look fucking good. It's 2024. I'm not trying to make it a 2024 game, but like something. You want to bump it up to like 2011. You want to you want it to look like Skyrim. 
as good well, as I downloaded. I finally figured out how to download DC Moods. Thank God, right? I got a high level texture pack, all of this off of Nexus. I uh, watched like 10 hours of mod videos to find out what were the best mods, what's compa compatible with what. Uh, that It's so fucking annoying. Why is this process like this? And why is there not a more streamlined version of this in all games? What happened uh, to the Steam Workshop? Uh, this, well, the Steam Workshop was only the Steam Workshop was only had integration with old rim and nothing else. You know, Brian, you could you know Nexus Mods does have uh, collections. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, I know. That's the only way that I've been uh, uh, going through it, browsing it. Not nah, that's fair. Honestly, the the collections are probably the way to go for you, all things considered. Um, they're a bit of a, it's a bit, if, 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 and by the way, have you ever heard of Enderel? No. So, do you own Skyrim on Steam? Yes. Do you own the special edition on Steam? I don't think so. I think I own the original version. That's fine. I've had it for a while. Okay, that's fine. The reason I bring it up is that, and I'm going to, I want to, I, honestly, I think I might end up doing an Enderel stream. And I'll do it on Instagram too, so you can watch. So mm. you might actually start watching my fucking streams and shit if I'm streaming that shit on Instagram. Yeah, I'll just be um, like, but yeah, but um, but yes. So just be cognizant. Um, I think. That you would like ender ender if you get if you're bored of Skyrim and you don't want to like mod oh do mod a whole thing or whatever, Elderel is a total conversion. It is mm. the third game in the in the in the series. The people the German team that makes it made a total conversion mod for Morrowind. They made a total conversion mod for Oblivion. Uh, and they made a total conversion mod for Skyrim. And this is all a self-contained world and story. It's it has it's almost completely revamped from the ground up. The way you level up, you don't do it through like progress. You get learning points and skill points and stuff. And you have to read books. You buy from merchants or you find in the world. To do. It's a wonderful game, and it's mm. super cool. And like every aspect of it is just super detailed, and interesting. And here's the big part. And this is kind of rough. No fast travel. B. You can fast travel by like getting teleport scrolls and spells and stuff you might be able to get. Uh, 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 there's plenty of like wait. They've done a good job of like making it so that everything is kind of connectable. And that is way. it a smaller map then, or is it still the same size? It's a pretty fucking hefty map if I'm being honest. But here's the th but here's the thing. They pl there are plenty of tools at your disposal to do it. And I'm gonna be honest. The lore and the voice acting and the writing is all like the opening segment of this game just had it's just it's just 20 minutes of like what the fuck is this shit? And it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, but I, here's a here's a common thing that I'm noticing about these mods just in general. Uh -huh. It's these people who uh idolize yesteryear's approach to gaming, which is to make it Oh yeah, they're hard. all cringe. Oh yeah, they're all cringe. And, it's all cringe. And it's like like DC mods uh, moods is a perfect example. And why the fuck does every high level weather texture pack for Fallout Three enable dark as fuck nights? I mean, dark as fuck to the point where I can't see. To the point where I'm looking at a black screen and all these fucking assholes are like, "Oh, it's the best way to play the game." How? I can't see anything. I understand yeah. that night is supposed to be night. I get that concept. I understand but, that. Probably. But you also need to see shit. We're not playing Resident Evil here. It's not a horror game. I'm not looking to play a horror it's, game. Exactly. <laughs> now, granted, the setting is horrific, but it's like it already has horror whimsy, elements. It, it's when you're walking fun, through. When you're walking through a metro and like five ghouls out of nowhere show the fuck up behind you, that's horror. That's yeah. scary. That's and enough to do. I don't need I don't need to not be able to see them until they're literally right in front of my face. I love the changes they made to ghouls in four. With yeah. like they're a lot more fucking freaky. I'll give them that. But yeah, like yeah, the modding system the, here's the thing. I, I'm a veteran Bethesda King mod. Like they're like, do you know what I would do on my sick days? 
when I was home from school and too sick to and I, like, and I was sick, I would, well, everybody's gone. I could have jacked off. I could have played video games. I could have watched TV. I did none of that. I sat, I had Netflix on the TV. I sat in front of my computer. So I had that as background noise and I figured out how to get my mod load order to work for eight hours. And then, then, and, and then I would play it for 20 minutes and then people would be home. That was what I did. So I, I'm neurotic as shit with this. So I promise you, I let me help. I can help. Fallout 3 is one of those games that is like... I'm going to be honest. If you're going to get a mod load order bullshit thing for 3, you're just wanna, going to want to go get Fallout mod you know, organizer. F, F, mm. F, 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 FO, FO mod. It's basically a bare fucking bones. You import a fucking zip file. It loads that shit in. You sort your load order. You're off to the races. It is a bare bones, simple thing. And honestly, I think it works better. It's less cumbersome and it's more, you know, off to the races compared to a mod organizer too, which don't get me wrong, I love. Uh, Vortex, it's... the whole nine yards. Thankfully, I gotta say, with Vortex, the fact that they streamline the fuck out of it, and every time you add a mod, the little, like, right-hand list comes down and is like, your mod order or this, figure it out. And I'm like, okay, I could just press these fucking buttons and figure it out and then play the game. I don't have to go into data files. I have a question. Yes. How the fuck do you change where your Steam game library goes? Uh, downloads games at because everybody keeps telling me I shouldn't have it being downloaded to my program files or my program uh, file x86 uh, thing it should be somewhere else in like a my games tab or uh, C drive slash games drive but I'm like how every time I go into steam and I press uh, I press Steam settings, and then I go to storage, and then it shows me the locations. It never lets me change the location to download it. So basically what you need to do is you need... so you In the um, same drive. In the same drive. In the same drive? Um, Is that not a thing anymore? Did Steam just delete that option? Because I remember no, you... There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do so. So what you just need to do is you just need to go to the storage and just click add drive. Do you have that? Because I, no, 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 Add drive, meaning if you have external storage, a uh, uh, SSD, something like that. It does the same thing. I literally just clicked it. I can go click into my D folder. I can click into my game and into the games thing. And I can select the folder there. I literally cannot. After we get off stream, I'll share my screen so you see what the fuck I'm talking about. But yeah, that that's my little thing. But I got you. But yeah, I gotta say, Vortex, Streamlines, all of this shit, I don't even need the Fallout 3 uh, thing you suggested. Because at least all the mods so far I've been downloading has been compatible enough with Vortex or I've figured out how to physically put it into the game files. Oh, that makes like, sense. yo, I gotta be so honest. There is a mod out there that skips the whole fall, uh, vault uh, introduction, and that thing is a fucking lifesaver. I gotta be honest. I, when I go and play Fallout 3, I don't like Fallout. Here's the thing Fallout 3 is one of those games that I personally don't feel the need to mod too much to enjoy myself. I will add a unofficial patch. I will uh, maybe, you know, get add a mod to get rid of the green tinge to everything. But other than that, I'm good. Yeah, like the only mods that I have for it right now, right, are the high texture pack, the DC moods, the floor pack, and I think like a weather, just a slight weather thing on top of it to make the nights less dark. So... I strictly have just visual based mods. I don't have any gameplay affecting mods aside yeah. from uh, also the uh, Project Beauty. That's the only other mod that I really have. See, that, that's the thing though. Visual mods can be the most disruptive and cause the most issues. Because you have to remember, Fallout Three is a is an old 
busted the fuck up game. That's why I watched a recent mod explanation video of the best mods that are compatible with each other that don't impact the game too much in terms of game breaking bugs or, you know, uh, too many things to change. And it was a recent video. Like, it wasn't one that was 10 years old, you know? Fair. That's fair. So I think I think that's why the combination I have right now is like a, a Goldilocks situation. I found it out. I'm not looking to change it. That's why I say when I do decide to do uh, uh, Tales from the Wasteland, I am going to, like, completely unload, uninstall all of those mods first install tales of the wasteland then find out if those mods are compatible with it double and check they should the, all be but double check the video i sent you because i'm pretty sure i show off the tab that has all the the, the, the list of all the tale of two wastelands mods that are up to date okay. yeah yeah, yeah you definitely have yeah it, it's tales of two wastelands is definitely one of those experiences that you you do want to kind of play pure just because um it's, it's just nice but um uh, let's uh, call it. How about we? Uh, given that your roommates and your and your and wifey just got home, how about we call it a uh, day? Well, they're both they're both going to the room. So if you want to, hi cool. Noelia. I, also, by the way, the camera can see you flipping them off in the mirror. Baby, we can see you. What? Yeah, we can. Yeah, the, the mirror. mirror. Flipping off Wednesday. She's flipping off the cat. Oh, I thought she was flipping off you. Nah. Uh, what's it going? Let's go. Let's go for another twenty, and then let's call it cool. I'm tired, but sure. <laughs> okay. You were the one talking about how you were going to stream after this, so honestly, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> if you call it, no problem. Yeah, but um, is there anything else you wanted to chat about? Uh, let's see. Oh, just I've nah, not really. That's more of a off-screen thing. I just got to talk to you about the. Or my podcast, but right, well, that's, that, fine. that's fine. Happy to, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching the rundown. If you want to support this show, please do so at himedia.gg slash tip. One dollar a month is a boon to my mental health. I am very poor, but also gets you access to a bunch of perks on the Discord, including early access and exclusive videos, among other things. I appreciate your support, ladies and gentlemen. We are this has been the rundown. I joined with this with my co-host, Mr. Brian Nodut to Ortega. I'm Evan from High Media TV. I can I also can Good. I'm glad to hear it.